In lesson three in fourth grade of our Ready Math curriculum, we're still working within our place value units. Everything we're doing is taking what we know about place value and applying it to things. So in lesson one, we looked at um, being able to identify the numbers based on their actual place value, writing them in standard form, word form, expanded form. We also looked at in lesson two, how to compare the numbers, again, looking by each place value and knowing which one was greater than or less than. So in lesson three, we're gonna take what we know about place value and we're gonna apply it to um, addition and subtraction. Now you've been adding and subtracting and really kind of using place value understanding since all the way back to kind of kindergarten and first grade, all right? But now in fourth grade, we're using bigger numbers. So I wanna do a quick review first, talking about this example over here. And this is our partial sums example, all right? As a first and second grader, when you're learning addition, we really talked a lot about each place value and adding them together. So I color coded it here as a quick review. All right, each place value is a different color. The ones, the tens, the hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. All right, and so what we did is we looked at each place value one at a time, starting with the ones place. And so we would say six and five equals 11. And so we have that right there. All right, and then I would say my tens place, I have five and one, which is six. Or I could think about the value. Five in the tens place is 50. One in the tens place is 10. So 50 and 10 gives me 60. And then my hundreds place, 400 and 200 is together 600. And we would continue on with the thousands. So 9,000 and 1,000 gives me 10,000. 7,000 and 2,000, or sorry, 70,000 and 20,000. Seven and two makes nine or 90,000. And then 300,000 and 100,000 gives me 400,000. And I'd put all those partial sums together to get my answer of 500,671, all right? Well, that takes a lot of time when we've added so many different place values now to what we're working with. When we first started with tens, hundreds, and ones, it wasn't a big deal to be able to do our partial sums. But now that we're adding multi-digit numbers, it takes a little bit longer to do these partial sums. So we can still get the correct answer, but it's no longer an efficient strategy. So we're gonna take what we know about what happens when we use these place values, and we're gonna use this standard algorithm. Now you may have been using it for a while, but it's a big emphasis of fourth grade is to now use the standard algorithm as our strategy. But we're gonna keep what we know about place value in the back of our mind. So I wanna walk you through that in this example right here. The exact same numbers, but instead of the partial sums, we're gonna use our standard algorithm. So starting again in the ones place, six and five I know is 11. But when we're doing the standard algorithm, we're only gonna write down one number per place value in our answer. So my number 11, I have to break that apart into tens and ones, all right? So instead of 11 right here, I'm only gonna put down what's in the ones place, and that is that one right there. The other one, the 10, the group of 10 is gonna be added to the rest of our groups of 10. So now I have 50, 10, and then there's another group of 10, five, one, and one. So five, one, and one, gives me seven or again 70 right we did the same thing over here but we didn't do it till the end we had the 11 and we had the 60 and we didn't add it together until we got all the partial sums to get our 71 but now we're saving some steps and we're doing it at the same time so i had my 11 i wrote down the digit in the ones place but carried the tens place digit over to the rest of the tens all right and then i added all my tens together so now we can add our hundreds together four and two again we know that four and two is six 400 and 200 gives me 600 along with the 71 i already had so we move to the thousands place 9,000 and 1,000, we know that over here, it was gonna be 10,000. But when I write down my answer, I don't write down 10, all right? I write down only the digit that would be in the thousands place. So run, instead of writing out the whole 10,000, I write down just the digit that would be in the thousands place, which is 
a zero because that one is going to be regrouped over into the ten thousands place because there's a group of ten thousand. Okay, so now in my ten thousands place, I have the seventy thousand, the twenty thousand, and now I have another group of ten thousand that I brought over when I had to regroup from the thousands place. So seven and three more is another group of ten. All right. Well, again, I only write down the digit that's in that place value. So that would be a hundred thousand now, which means I've got to regroup that one hundred thousand over to the hundred thousands place. And then I have three, four, and five. So we end up with the same number, five hundred thousand six hundred and seventy one in both problems, but we took out a lot of steps because we took out the partial sums. All right. So here, what you have to be careful with is the regrouping and carrying it over into the correct place value, writing down one digit in each place value of our answer and carrying the rest over to the next place value. So this works the same with subtraction, and here's where we will have the most trouble, again, it's because of the regrouping and the borrowing, we call it, we call it regrouping, all right? So let's do a quick example of subtraction of the standard algorithm. Five and two, I want to take two away from five, we know that that gives me three, all right? It's pretty easy. Problem is when we have to take, we have 10 and we want to take 20 away, we can't do that. So we know we have to go over to our hundreds place. We're going to leave one of the hundreds over here. We're going to bust the other hundred up into 11 tens. I brought 10 tens over and I already had one there. So now I have 11 tens and I can take away two tens. And that's going to give me nine now in the tens place or 90. All right. Think about this as 110 minus 20. We're talking about the value. And 110 minus 20 is 90. Okay. Now we're going to subtract in the hundreds place. Well, again, I have 100. And I'm trying to take away 300s, and I can't do that. So again, I have to regroup 100 from here. So I still have 200s. I'm going to bring the other 100 over here. I have already. And let me erase some of this stuff so it doesn't confuse you too much. Actually, right, I'm going to look at one place value. I have now, I had 100. I'm bringing over another group of 1,000 to make 10 hundreds or now 11 hundreds. So 11 hundreds minus 3 hundreds is going to still leave me with 8 hundreds. All right. And then I can quickly do the rest of this. 2,000 minus 1,000 is 1,000. 4,000 minus 2,000 is 2,000. All right. So it does get tricky with subtraction because when we have to regroup in a thousand down to the hundreds place it gets a little messy so you have to be really careful with that all right that's going to be something you want to practice and that's going to be something that you're going to practice throughout the year